As I mentioned, there are some special characters that regular expression uses. These characters that I've marked up here they all have a special meaning in the regular expression language, which means that if you're looking for a string that contains a dollar, for instance, then in your regular expression, you need to write backslash dollar. Okay, because otherwise the regular expression engine interprets the dollar as having a special meaning. So be aware of that. If your pattern matching includes any of these characters here that you're looking for in the string, then you need to escape them uh, with a backslash. In order to make this work with the Python classes, you need to add the R for the raw string or you need to double escape it. Let's look at a real case example. That example is the task of validating a MAC address. So MAC addresses are unique identifiers of devices in a network. They consist of uh, some numbers or characters, of always two, separated by a column, and then you have one, two, three, four, five, uh, six of them. So this is um, a valid MAC address. Uh, this one is uh, not valid because it only has five double character classes. Uh, and this one is actually an invalid one because it contains invalid characters. So a MAC address, it may only contain characters from A to F. So P here is invalid and the little Q is invalid. Okay, and our task now is to write a regular expression that checks if the, if the MAC address that is being passed in is a valid one or not. And the way we do this is through um, test-driven development. Today, I show you an alternative to PyTest that you can use. It's called DocTest. The way that works is that a Python module that actually checks the documentation and um, it interprets code in the documentation as examples and runs them and checks that the output is the one that is shown in the documentation. Let me demo this to you. Down here, I import DocTest. This is the module for testing the documentation and then I simply run the test mod function because I might want to use this validate Mac function here as a um, module. So I add the if name uh, equals name trick here so that this testing code is only executed if I run this as a script. So this of course doesn't work yet. So I just add a dummy statement down here that the function returns nothing for now. So now we can run this script. Let's see what happens. Uh, nothing happens. This should be main. Okay, so now what happens is that doc test runs this function up here is valid Mac and interprets these lines here as a test that should supposed to be run. So it uh, creates this list up here and then it runs this print is valid Mac with the list as an input. And then it checks that the output of the function is equal to whatever I've written down here. And so you can see on the right hand side that uh, the moment this test fails, expected was true, false, false, because the first uh, MAC address was a valid one and then the other two were false. That's why I ad added that. But it got none, okay, because I haven't returned anything in that function. So um, at the moment, of course, our test fails. So our task now is to implement the regular expression. How can we match this MAC address. Well, the very first idea is describe the pattern that we are looking at. So we know every MAC address starts with a word character followed by another word character, then followed by a colon, and then we have another word character, word character. This is the second pattern, then another one. Now we have three, four, five, six. So we have always two word characters, then a colon, and then six times in total. Okay, so it's quite lengthy, but that's our best guess for now. And so now we need to apply this regular expression to the addresses that we get in. So far I've only shown you re.sub, which uh, does a substitution. It's essentially substitution and finding patterns in text that are the most important one. There's re.findall that essentially works very similar to substitution, but instead it tries to find the, the pattern in the text and returns the text if it found it. If it couldn't find it, then it simply returns an empty list. Maybe let me just show this to you in, in the previous example. Let's say I'm interested in, in finding all the words that start with SP, and then have a non-character word and end with M. Right? Then I can use this find all method. And so if I run this, Python 03. So see, now I get a list with all the occurrences of that pattern class. If you describe a word that never occurs, see if I have a pattern here that never occurs, then I simply get an empty list. 
Okay, so in exactly that we can now uh, use here. So we, we're trying to find words that match that regular expression. We loop over all the addresses that we get passed in. Let's just see what we get here. This will not quite work yet, but uh, we can at least look at the output. We get a list in the first case. Uh, we matched the regular expression, which is good because it was a valid one. Uh, the second one was too short. So here we didn't get a match. And the second one uh, got also a match. So here we need to improve our regular expression. But yeah, these are all word characters. So we expected a match here in this case. So this works now. We just need to convert this into true or false. What we can do is we can simply write matches equals, I do another list comprehension. I check if that matches is not the empty list. If it's valid MAC address, then the list will be not empty. And if it's invalid, then it's going to be an empty list. So I just simply convert this into a list of true or false statement. Okay. And so now we're getting closer. We're expecting true, false, false, uh, but we're getting true, false, true. And the last one is incorrect still because we haven't refined our regular expression enough yet. Now we need to be more specific with which characters we want to match in the uh, MAC address. As I mentioned, uh, the only valid characters are A to F. Anything after the F in the alphabet uh, should be invalid. Regular expression allows us to specify, uh, be more specific about which characters we want to match. And before we do that, I will um, uh, first rewrite this a little bit so that, that I don't need to duplicate so much code. I will have uh, one variable that describes the uh, character that I want to match. In this case, let's just keep it the backslash W. And then here, I replace this code with regx equals. I use the join function. So I want the character to always two times. And then I want to have this joined with the colon in total six times. These two lines should now return exactly the same result, except that I should probably use the raw here. Okay, let's just uh, check that. So if I do a printed regx here and do the same here, we probably get the same. Yeah. And so the reason why I do that is because now I can play around with this backslash W character. So at the moment, we are matching any word character, but we want to be more specific. And the way you can describe a set of characters that you want to match is with square brackets. And in the square bracket, you can write which characters you want to match. In our case, we want to match 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, EF. Uh, it's case sensitive. Let's also add the capital characters. And so now let's see what happens. So now if I run it, nothing happens. And if nothing happens, that means that, that the tests pass. The reg regular expressions work exactly as they're supposed to. Again, the curly brackets, this is how you can specify a specific set, set of characters that you want to match. Of course, this becomes a bit cumbersome if you have to write out ranges like this. So in regular expression, you can actually write uh, ranges with a, with a minus notation. So if you want to have match any numbers from 0 to 9, you can simply write 0 minus 9. And the same thing also works with the alphabet. So um, you can match A to F and you can also match capital A to F. And so this should uh, still work. And I've actually um, shown you this notation before already. Here when I talked about the um, word characters, on the right hand side I've written out the equivalent uh, notation in regular expression. So instead of writing um, word character, you could have also written bracket a to z, capital A to z, and 0 to 9. And you can also see um, if you want to negate that, all you need to do is you add a hat in front of it. Right? If so if you have a set of uh, characters, but you do not want to match that set, you simply add a hat. Okay, so now let's th make things more complicated. I take a MAC address that is valid, and then I make it invalid by making it too long. We should now also uh, extend the expected output. We expect a false here. Okay, let's see what happens now. Our regular expression um, returns true in this case. That's not su surprising because we do find six double characters separated by a colon just fine in this string. So um, the regular expression engine is happy and it returns true in this case. But we are not happy because we want to be more specific. We want to have these double characters separated by a colon, but then it should stop after that. So we need to have a new tool in our uh, language and that tool is called anchors. So anchors are a description of characters that are not visible. One anchor, for instance, is 
the head, which is, uh, represents the beginning of a line. Of course, the beginning of the line is not really a, a real character, uh, but you can still use it in the regular expression engine. The same thing is with the dollar. So the dollar represents the end of the line, and then you have the best backslash b, the boundary of a word, and the backslash capital B, uh, not a boundary of a word. Again, I just want to highlight this again. If you use the normal backslash b in a non-raw string, it has the interpretation of moving the cursor to the left. But in the regular expression interpretation, this means boundary of a word. So you really need to keep this multiple levels here. There's the Python string interpretation, and then there's the regular expression interpretation of strings. And that's why we always use these raw strings. But now we can go back and fix our example. So we want to extend our expression. We want to say that the regular expression is the beginning of the string followed by what we just had, the regular expression, followed by the end of the string. So now we are matching exactly the same pattern as we had before, but we're requesting that that comes nothing before and not nothing else. So let's try this again. And now it works.